Okay, let's have another game now. So, um, yeah, that North London Blitz, um, the last round, I don't know, um, I was so happy to have beaten that Russian GM with black. And in the second game, I was, I was killing him as well. And <laughs> this endless kind of end game happened. Um, and he seemed to be, um, you know, playing quicker than me, instantly. Um, Paul Georgia was, was saying his, his end game was absolutely superb. And and I was mistaken that his rook was on. I had actually, a, at one point in the ending, his I had a rook myself on g4 and a bishop on d7. He had taken on h3. And I'd moved my rook. And then, and then I remember thinking, oh, couldn't I have taken his, his rook on h3? Um, but actually, it's because I'd moved my rook, then, so it wasn't actually on. So I think he had played the ending without any major blunder of losing a rook. Um, oh, let's just play this. D5. Let's go in for E5, give him what he wants. Nimzovich defence. I'll just play F4 or something. Uh, nice pawn chain. Give, give, give black something. No, F5 square. Bishop E5 maybe. Because that knight's over there, why not just double pawns here? Bishop takes c6. Would that be terrible? Probably, it would probably be weakening my, my light squares a bit too much. Okay. So what are the trump cards here? I've given black nice f5, but on, on, on to balance that I've got a nice aggressive pawn chain. He's a bit cramped. Um, with this pawn chain, this, this pawn's blocking, uh, the knight's been blocked in Chagorin style, the C pawn, which is important if black ever wants to play C5 to undermine D4 later. But I guess he could just move the knight back and then play C5. Positionally, this, this, I don't know, this bishop, this queen, they're good at the moment. Uh, can I play like, um, can't play rook F2's knight G4. So this knight and the queen threatening to coordinate. I think knight f1 to g3 maybe to try and attack the queen if it goes to h5. Bishop e2 at some point. I don't know what those sounds are. I've moved the iPhone to the other part of the room and I think it's still annoying me from, from that part of the room. I don't know why. <laughs> um... Okay, so if I take and then bishop d3, why not? I'm going to recapture these, these light squares, because basically I've weakened all of them uh, with these pawn advances. Uh, right, being knight g5 here tactically, attacking the queen. Uh, I've got the two bishops, why don't I just go for the ending? Queen h4, knight e6. I think. And this f2 is a problem. Alright, I think I'll try that. I know it looks a bit boring, but I've got the two bishops, so. Uh, Especially if he's going to give me the dark square bishop. I know it's like up against Shigori now with the two knights versus the two bishops if he's going to take on g5. Okay, so what do we do with the two bishops here? I think opening up the game at some point, maybe putting pressure on the f is the immediate plan. Um, almost bishop h7 is a tactic. g4. The knights will come to life after g4. G3 and king g2. If he's going to take and rook f8, then bishop h7 and rook takes f8. That classic tactic. Deflection. Because uh, this bishop is kind of useful. Uh, okay, he's created some weaknesses. But are they, you know, important? I don't know. If I can bring the king up and then play h4. I don't want to give these squares any any any. I don't want to give these knights any squares. Not any of these squares any knights. These knights. I don't want to give them any squares. He's not going to play rook of eight. Is it? Oh, it's a classic tactic. Bishop h seven. Come on. 
Alright, the exchange up it will be easier, but um support the game a bit. He's resigned. Okay, okay, so uh I I gave black F five. Uh this is a potentially losing thing to do to give black F five. But after Queen H five he lost his light squared bishop and I I got the light squares back. So E four, F five all under pressure now. After knight g5, I don't mind the exchange of queens, the two bishops. This bishop in particular is pretty dangerous tactically because it's eyeing h7 and these variations, which um, he clearly underestimated. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.